welcome to this session of the course fluid machines. Today we are going to discuss about few problems related to Francis turbine and Kaplan turbine. So, the problem statement for the first problem is show that when runner blade angle at inlet of a Francis turbine is 90 degree and the velocity of flow is constant the hydraulic efficiency is given by 2 over 2 plus 10 square alpha, where alpha is the vein angle. So, we need to find out the hydraulic efficiency of the Francis turbine for the particular case in which the inlet blade angle is 90 degree and flow velocity is constant throughout the turbine. So, at first let us see the typical velocity triangle for a Francis turbine. So, typical velocity triangle for a Francis turbine So, this is the relative velocity at inlet, this u 1 is tangential velocity of the runner at the inlet, this is v 1 the absolute velocity of the fluid at inlet and this, this part is flow velocity at the inlet. Now, the absolute velocity makes an angle alpha 1 with the tangential velocity of the runner which is termed as inlet vein angle and the relative relative velocity makes an angle beta 1 with the tangential velocity of the rotor which is termed as blade angle. This is the turbine runner which rotates say in this direction. So, this part is inlet and this part is outlet. At the outlet fluid leaves radially. So, V 2 is V f 2, this is the tangential velocity of the runner blade at outlet and this is the radial velocity of the fluid at outlet and this angle can be termed as beta 2 which is the exit blade angle. Now, in this particular case for the Francis turbine the inlet blade angle is 90 degree. So, beta 1 is 90 degree. So, in this case the velocity triangles will be So, this is the turbine runner. So, for beta 1 equals to 90 degree relative velocity at inlet will be same as the flow velocity at inlet. This is the absolute velocity at inlet, this is tangential velocity of the runner at inlet and the exit velocity triangle remains same. Now, we have to find the hydraulic efficiency of the Francis turbine. Now, let us first write the definition of hydraulic efficiency. So, hydraulic efficiency can be defined in this way. It is the ratio of mechanical energy delivered by the rotor over the energy available from the fluid. So, mechanical energy delivered by the rotor 
over energy available from the fluid. This definition can also be given in terms of head, which is work equivalent head, equivalent head over the available head. available head. Now, the work equivalent head, work equivalent head W is nothing but the energy per unit weight of fluid transferred from fluid to the turbine runner. So, which can be expressed in this way, B, uh, 1 by 2 g times v 1 square minus v 2 square plus v r 2 square minus v r 1 square plus u 1 square minus u 2 square, where the first term v 1 square minus v 2 square by 2 g refers to the change in absolute kinetic energy of the uh, absolute kinetic energy of the fluid or dynamic head across the turbine and these two combination of these two terms can be explained or uh, this can be written in terms of static head difference. So, W so this Now, the available head, available head which can be termed as H is nothing but W plus the energy, energy rejected, energy rejected from turbine at the outlet. So, H is W plus outlet energy will be V 2 square by 2 g in terms of head. So, let us find these quantities in terms of the inlet vein angle. So, let us first draw another time the inlet velocity triangle. So, this is given as alpha which is the inlet vein angle, this is u 1, this is v r 1 which is also equal to v f 1 and this is v 1. The outlet velocity triangle is like this, this angle is beta this is u 2, this is v 2 is equals to v f 2 and this is v r 2. Now, here our main intention is to express v 1, v 2, v r 1, v r 2 all these quantities in terms of u 1, u 2, alpha and beta where alpha is the inlet vein angle and beta is the blade angle at the exit. Towards this from this triangle we can write cosine of alpha will be u 1 by v 1. So, this gives v 1 as u 1 sec alpha and tan alpha can be written as v r 1 by u 1. So, this gives v r 1 equals u 1 tan alpha. Now, v 2 is v f 2 is equals to v f 1 as per the 
definition of the problem. So, in problem it is mentioned that the velocity of flow is constant. So, flow velocity at inlet will be equal to the flow velocity of outlet. So, V f 1 equals to V f 2. So, using this equality of flow velocity, we can write V 2 as V f 1, which is V r 1 equals u 1 tan alpha. Now, to express, so till now we have expressed V 1 in terms of u 1 and alpha, V r 1 in terms of u 1 and alpha and V 2. So, now we have to express V r 2 in terms of u uh, 2 or u 2 and beta. So, cosine of beta can be obtained from this velocity triangle as u 2 by v r 2. This gives v r 2 equals u 2 sec beta. So, all the four quantities are now obtained. Now, let us substitute these terms in the expression of work available head. So, this is the expression for work available head. Now, I am going to substitute V 1, V 2 and V R 2 and V R 1. So, let us first write again the work available head W is 1 by 2 g V on square minus V 2 square plus V r 2 square minus V r 1 square plus u 1 square minus u 2 square. So, V 1 we have obtained as u 1 sec alpha. So, let us substitute that. So, u 1 square sec square alpha V 2 is obtained as u 1 tan alpha. So, u 1 square tan square alpha. Now, let us substitute V r 2 and V r 1. So, V r 2 is obtained as u 2 sec beta. So, u 2 square sec square beta and V r 1 is obtained as u 1 tan alpha. So, u 1 square tan square alpha and we will keep u 1 and u 2 as it is. So, is here we can take u 1 square common. So, this will be 6 square alpha minus tan square alpha plus now we can transform this 6 square beta in terms of tan square. So, u 2 square into 1 plus tan square beta minus u 1 square tan square alpha plus u 1 square minus u 2 square. So, this is nothing but 1. So, simplifying this expression we obtain u 1 square plus u 2 square plus u 2 square tan square beta minus u 1 square tan square alpha plus u 1 square minus u 2 square. So, this u 2 square and this u 2 square get cancelled and we can see and all another thing to note that there is one u 1 square and there is one u 1 square. So, 1 by 2 g 2 u 1 square plus u 2 square tan square beta minus u 1 square tan square alpha. Okay. Now, from the velocity triangle, let us find out what is u 2 tan beta and what is u 1 tan alpha. So, u 2 tan beta. 
So, from this diagram we can write that u 2 tan beta is v f 2 and from this triangle we can write u 1 tan alpha is equals to v f 1, but it has been given that v f 1 is equals to v f 2. So, u 1 tan alpha and u 2 tan beta these two are equal. So, this term will be 0. So, this term will be 0. So, w is nothing but u 1 square by 2 g. Now, let us substitute this form of w in the expression of hydraulic efficiency. So, the hydraulic efficiency is work available head over the or w plus h or this is h so w is obtained as u 1 square by 2 g and h is w plus the head lost u 2 square by 2 g now there is one small correction here 2 and 2 will cancel out. So, this will be u 1 square by g. So, here also w will be u 1 square by g and h the head available is nothing but the work available head plus head at the exit of the turbine which is u 2 square by 2 g. Now, from the velocity triangle we can express u 2 in term uh, v 2 in terms of u 2. So, this is u 2 and this is v 2. So, tan beta will be v 2 by u 2. or in this case uh, if we want to express uh, v 2 in terms of alpha then we can write in this way. So, v 2 is the flow velocity at the exit v f 2 v f 2 which is equal to the flow velocity at the inlet and the flow velocity at the inlet can be expressed in terms of the inlet vein angle. So, v 2 is u 1 tan alpha. So, in this way we can express v 2 in terms of the inlet vein angle. This definition express uh, from this triangle we can express v 2 in terms of u 2 and beta, but beta is not a given quantity in the problem. So, it, it is useful to uh, use the relation equality of flow velocity and express v 2 in terms of u 1 and tan alpha. So, let us substitute this expression of v 2. So, v 2 is u 1 tan alpha. So, h is u 1 square by 2 g plus u 1 square tan square alpha by 2 g or u 1 square by 2 uh, g there will not be any 2. So, eta hydraulic is u 1 square by g over u 1 square by g plus u 1 square tan square alpha by 2 g. Now, after some simplification we can obtain u by 2 by 2 plus tan square alpha. So, eta hydraulic 
is 2 over 2 plus tan square alpha. So, initially this was the problem given problem that hydraulic efficiency will be 2 by 2 plus tan square alpha. So, now we move on to solve the second problem which is related to Kaplan turbine. So, this is the problem definition. So, a Kaplan turbine develops 100 megawatt of power under a head of 4.3 meter taking a speed ratio of 1.8, flow ratio of 0.5, boss diameter 0.35 times the outer diameter and overall efficiency of 90 percent. Find the diameter and speed of the runner. So, we, we have to find out the diameter and speed of the runner for the given parameters. So, the power output is given as 100 megawatt head is 4.3 meter, speed ratio, speed ratio is 1.8, flow ratio is 0.5 and boss diameter, let us represent this by d b is 0.35 times the outer diameter, let us represent it by d o and also it is mentioned that the overall efficiency is 90 percent. To determine the diameter let us first try to obtain the flow rate through the Kaplan turbine. Now, let us first utilize the definition of overall efficiency. So, overall efficiency can be written as power delivered over power available. Power delivered is given as 10 megawatt for this turbine. So, this is 10 into 10 to the power 6 watt. Power available is rho q g h, where rho is the density of the fluid. Here, we are considering water. Q is the flow rate g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the head. Now, substituting all the quantities, we can determine q as 10 into 10 to the power 6 is the power density, acceleration is 9.81, h is given as 4.3 and overall efficiency is 0.9. So, flow rate can be obtained from here as 263.4 meter cube per second. Now, flow rate is related uh, to the cross sectional area. So, and we can determine diameter from there. So, so before obtaining diameter, let us define what is flow ratio. So, flow ratio. This is just a definition, is re this represents the ratio of axial velocity and absolute velocity at inlet. So, the ratio of axial velocity and absolute velocity at inlet is termed as flow ratio. Now, flow ratio is given as 0 0.5. So, this is 0 0.5. Axial velocity let us term this as V a and absolute velocity at inlet as V 1. Now, V 1 can be obtained from the head given. So, h is 4.3 meter. So, V 1 can be obtained as 2 g h equals to 2 into 9.81 to h is 4.3. So, V 1 you can obtain from this relation in meters per second. Now, substituting this V 1 we can obtain 
v a from this relation as 0.5 times 2 into 9.81 into 4.3 this is 4.59 meter per second so axial velocity is 4.59 meter per second now the flow rate through the Kaplan turbine is axial velocity times the cross sectional area a now this cross sectional area is the annular area over which the flow is taking place this can be written as pi by 4 d0 square minus db square where d0 is the diameter outer diameter and db is the boss diameter now it has uh, it has been given that the db is 0.35 times d0 so let's substitute this so area is pi by 4 times d0 minus 0 0.35 times d0 square so flow rate is v a times pi by 4 d 0 square minus 0.35 times d 0 square we have obtained the flow rate previously so flow rate is obtained as 263.4 meter cube per second so let's just substitute this so 263.4 axial velocity is also obtained as 4.59 meter per second 4.59 into pi by 4 d 0 square minus 0.35 d 0 square so d 0 will be 0 can be obtained as 4 times 263.4 by pi into 4.59 into 1 minus 0.35 square over root so this will be 9.12 meter so one of the results now we have obtained the diameter of the diameter of the runner so this is the diameter or rather outer diameter of the runner now we have to find the speed of the runner now to find this let us introduce the speed ratio which is the blade speed at outer diameter over the absolute velocity at inlet this is just a definition now speed ratio is given in the problem as 1.8 blade speed let us denote is by u and absolute velocity is 2g h now substituting these quantities we can obtain u as 1.8 times 2 into 9.81 times h is 4.3 so this you can obtain as 16.53 meter per second so this blade speed is related to the rotational speed of the turbine so u is pi d0 n by 60 where n is in rpm so this relation gives u into 60 by pi d0 so u now we have obtained as 16.53 so 16.53 times 60 over pi times d0 is obtained as 9.12 9.12 this gives 34.6 rpm so s rotational speed of the turbine runner is 
RPM. So, this completes our second and the last problem. With this, I will end the today's class. Thank you.